Hi, this is Ernie. Welcome to the NCRS High Density Orchard. This is an orchard that has been established for about 10 years. They're just finishing picking up the apples here in the fall. And some of the ways that you have to pick apples are, they use these little devices to collect the apples. And one thing you have to be really careful with apples about is bruising them. So when they pick an apple, they put it in gently. You can't throw them gently because if they get bruises, they actually start to release a gas called ethylene and that will cause everything in else, else in there to get rotten. So it's real important that they pick them carefully. Okay, the whole idea of high density orchards is something that originated in Europe in the 1940s. After World War II, there was so much decimation of property and a lot of orchards were destroyed. They needed ways to grow apples quickly and other produce as well. They can do this with pear trees and cherry trees and other trees. But this is a strictly apple orchard. In this orchard, we have three acres and over 3,000 trees. As you can see, they're planted very closely together. These have four foot spacing between the trees, and yet they're able to thrive. And in old orchards, they had full size trees, but this orchard, even though the trees only grow to a maximum, they're at their maximum height right now, which is about 10 feet. They're never, these are full grown mature trees that are less than 10 years old. And each tree produces about 50 pounds of apples every year. And so when you buy apples at the store, you wanna get big apples, right? Everybody wants big apples. So one of the tricks that they do on all orchards, and they do it in particular here, is in the springtime, if you're gonna grow apples, they grow on these little bud systems, and about five or six apples might grow together. And if you grow five or six apples, you're gonna get five or six apples that are this big. But if you pull off the buds of three or four of them, and just leave the center one, which is called the king bud, you're gonna get only one apple, but it's gonna be that big. So that's one way that they trick the trees into making bigger apples, and you actually still get the same weight. You're gonna get 50 pounds, whether you have 500 apples on a tree or 200 apples on a tree. So earlier I talked to you about grafting. Grafting is where they take the rootstock of something that will control how high it grows, and also they take into consideration, because there are hundreds of different rootstocks, it'll prevent certain diseases, it will do a lot of things in the roots. So they take a branch from a Honeycrisp, if you want a Honeycrisp, and they call it a scion, S-C-I-O-N, and they hook it right onto the root. So all of these trees started out that way, and if you look closely at the base of the tree, you can see this bulged area is where this original grafting took place. So the roots below and the tree was here. But you'll notice on these trees that there's another little bump right here on some of them. And this little bump is because after a couple of years of growing, we had a problem in the orchard. We had an infestation of an animal that came in here and killed hundreds of these trees. So they had to get more Honeycrisp branches and then hook them on to the existing part of the tree right here. Anybody want to guess what it was that came in and killed all the apple trees? It wasn't bears, it wasn't deer, it was little bunny rabbits. And what the bunny rabbits did is they came in one year when we had a lot of snow and they girdled the tree, which means they chewed all the way around the bark. And the bark, of course, is where the cambium layer is and that's where the nutrients are taken up. So the rabbits killed hundreds of these trees by just chewing around the bark because they love to eat that bark. And you'll also notice that these trees are all painted white along the bottom and that's not to prevent the rabbits from getting them but there's something else that will girdle the branches or girdle the trunk as well and that's mice. So they put this white paint on there and when the mice bite into it they don't like the taste so they leave the tree alone. Because mice like to nest at the bottom of trees in the winter under the snow because they can get a little snack from the tree but that has seemed to prevent them from being able to do that. So there are lots of things that want to get apples and deer are one of them definitely. So if you look, this entire three acres is surrounded by this fence, which is over eight feet tall. That's to keep the deer out. But this is the fence that they had to add after that, all that damage from the rabbits. And this is to keep the small animals out, the rabbits, the squirrels, and anything else that would try to get in here. 
So another aspect of the high density orchard is because these roots are designed to grow the trees not so tall, they're also not as strong. So these trees would all literally blow over except they are supported up and down by these wires and there are posts every about 30 feet and it prevents them from falling over because these roots would actually not support the tree. They'd fall right over. So it takes a lot of money to do a high density orchard. So there are some drawbacks. Also irrigation is very important because of their compact nature. So this has drip tubes set up throughout. It also has the ability to water from above where they ran lines all the way across the top. And they can apply fertilizer using these also as well as pesticides, herbicides. But they actually do that with a different system because they've had some troubles with these lines being plugged up oftentimes. So in the orchard you can see here is a dead tree. Honeycrisp trees, one of the reasons these apples cost so much is they're the divas of apples. They're very picky, they're hard to grow and require a lot of maintenance. This one died for who knows what reason, but one of the things that they will be able to do is, and they'll do that in the spring because that's when grafting has to take place, is they'll cut this off right down at this base and then they will graft another honeycrisp branch onto this root and the this part of the little tree growing up and it'll start to grow up so they can still reuse that root and this tree should be back to normal in about four to five years. Now another thing you'll notice in the orchard is it's set up with a different kind of apple. These are crab apples and there are crab apple trees all throughout here they do not harvest them. They have real no purpose as far as the fruit that's produced. But the reason they are here is there are so many trees in here then they all have to be pollinated in the spring that one of the best pollinators is a crab apple because the crab apple makes lots of blossoms, attracts lots of bees, and you can pollinate one apple tree to another, but since these are all honey crisps, they are not self-pollinating which means they have to get pollen from a different source and crab apples are that source so there are crab apple trees all throughout this orchard that are just there for that purpose at this orchard also you can see that the rows are pretty close together they could have actually made them closer but one of the things they did was measured how big the tractors were that were going to drive in between here and made the rows according to that because there's no specific there are some high density orchards where they're now planting trees up to 18 inches apart these are four feet three feet two feet they keep getting smaller and smaller or closer together i should say and when harvesting apples what we do at this orchard is we actually have a lot of staff that work for agro liquid that this year harvested many of these apples using those little baskets that I showed earlier at the introduction carrying around, they actually drive the tractors up and down and they have these large crates that they gently put the apples in. They don't dump them in, they just gently put them in. And then these, are, these make it easier to transport them around to different areas to make cider or whatever other use they're going to have. Another advantage to the high density orchard and keeping the trees shorter is they're easier to pick. And since these are only 10 feet high, they don't have to use any ladders in here, which is one of the hard parts in large orchards of leaning ladders into trees, which damages the trees and does other things. But here's one of our agri-liquid employees, Renee, who's harvesting apples just in the back of a lift on a tractor where they can just drive through the orchard and she can easily reach the low level apples. So thank you very much for coming to our virtual tour at the orchard. This is farm eight actually of 14 farms that they have spread throughout the whole area and hopefully next year you can come in person because one of the last things we get to do in real is everybody that comes out gets to pick an apple at the end of the year. So thank you.